Howdy folks, Fast Wheels here. Let's ride. All right, today I'm coming to you from the Salado Creek Trail South. I'm starting out here from the Jack White Trailhead and heading down towards Southside Lions. At the time, it was my intent to meet up with Operation Comfort, but apparently I had the time wrong, my own mistake, so I ended up missing them. Uh, by the time I was hitting the trail, they were already hitting the trail on the other end, and I have no idea how we didn't cross paths, but somehow we didn't. Um, this trail has gone through quite a bit of work over the last year, since the last time I rode it. Uh, it used to be probably the worst trail in the San Antonio area. Uh, they've done a whole lot, replaced a lot of asphalt with concrete, and concrete does make a whole lot better of a medium for these trails. And as a result, it's a lot smoother. Now down here in San Antonio area, the ground is mostly clay. So as it rains, the clay swells, and as it dries out, the clay contracts. And as a result, that's basically the same as uh, frost heaves up north. It really does make for uneven terrains and throws not only the roads and the trails out of whack, it, sends, it messes with foundations of homes. It's, it's kind of a pain in the butt down here. One of the prices that you pay for having such a beautiful place to live. Now, as a result, it's caused lots of problems with the trails over the years. Uh, this trail in particular, there's got lots and lots of bridges. And in the past, the, the bridge stays pretty steady, but the trail flexes one way or the other. And it's caused big gaps between the bridges and the trails uh, for quick stop gaps. Parks and Rec has used pieces of diamond plate to connect the two together. And that's pretty much made for a nice... Nice jumps, if you want it, if you want to call it that way. Uh, it caused a lot of accidents for the upright bikes. They come flying through there, and they hit that thing and fly through the air and crash and nasty. Uh, for me, it would rip out the bottom of the hand cycle, the little Velcro straps. Not fun. Um, this area here where I'm crossing right now, it's a uh, frontage road for I-35. It's a really dangerous area. People are getting on and off the highway here and they're flying uh i've seen people going as fast as 75 80 miles an hour as a guess uh with anything that has to do with traffic go always go by the rule of applied tonnage he who has more tons wins in other words i don't care who has the right of way they're bigger than you are they will kill you so let them go uh, especially for a hand cycle, these intersections are tough. As you see, I'm fate going towards the flow of traffic, but coming the other way, they're coming up behind me, and especially with the neck fusion, it's really difficult to look. So have your mirrors, look through your mirrors, take the time to jump, to get out of the saddle if you have to, to look around, do whatever you need to do to make sure that you're safe. Um, I wish there was something that the Parks and Rec could do to make that intersection a little bit safer, but... Hey, it is what it is. I'm just grateful to have it. Uh, the last video I did here, it was still winter months, and the, there were no leaves on the trees or anything else like that. And now it's all green and beautiful, and it's very much enjoyable. Um, where I'm going through right there I'm, is a railroad track above, above you as you're going through, and they put that little covering on there in case any debris falls off the trains. Now, this video was a plethora of mistakes for me. Um, you can tell that I'm talking as I move my hands a little bit. Uh, during the video, I was attempting to narrate as I was riding, and the only thing that resulted in is a sore throat by the, end, by the time I hit the end of the trail. Uh, the audio was really crap, so... So, so be it for that. Uh, I've also tried going back to an older camera location, which honestly, I really don't like it. I prefer the camera all the way up in front, so I'm going to go back to that. Uh, I put it here just for the sole intent that hopefully being able to capture my voice. Um, another thing, my uh, hearing aids are out being fixed, so I had a speaker in the back there to listen to music rather than you know my normal being kind of quiet and being over the hearing aids. Uh, outbound, I was listening to iHeartRadio, and coming back, I was listening to some Irish music. 
and the outbound, you couldn't hear crap, and the inbounds, you know, I didn't think you'd be able to hear crap, so I just playing traditional folk music, and I don't think folks really want to listen to that. So we will see what we will see. Um, yeah, as we're going through the trail here, I'm going to start talking about a few things. Uh, first thing I'm going to talk about is nonprofits. Uh, there are a whole lot of nonprofits out there that help disabled folks. Uh, the one that I'm going out to meet up with is Operation Comfort. They are a local nonprofit that helps disabled, sick, Ill, Ill and injured service members and their families. Uh, it was started during uh, the War on Terror by a woman by the name of Janice Rosenkowski. Uh, Janice was an airline flight attendant, and part of her work was bringing people on the airplanes from the war zone back to the States to, for medical treatment. Here in San Antonio, we've got one of the major military medical hubs. It's called BAMSI. Uh, for those of you who have heard of Walter Reed, it's basically the same thing, except it's in San Antonio. It's a very major hospital. Does a whole lot of really good work for our service members. Um, when the veterans come here for the treatment, they are generally here for a very long time. Uh, sometimes months, sometimes even years, depending on how much treatment they, they are needing. Uh, families relocate here to be with their loved ones. And that creates a bit, big hardship on the families. So Jane started this nonprofit initially to help out the people who were in the hospital and to help their families, and it's expanded and expanded over the years. Currently, for programs that they operate, they have adaptive cycling. They have swimming, sled hockey, woodworking, yoga, as well as some uh, seasonal activities, you know, things like kayaking and whatnot. Uh, being a local nonprofit, it is very localized as far as donations. Uh, they're major fundraisers. They do a 5K in February, and they do a car show on Memorial Day. And that is where the vast majority of their income derives from. Um, in recent years, it has become no longer in vogue to make donations to military nonprofits. So funding has really, really tanked, not only with Op Operation Comfort, but all these different veteran nonprofits out there. Now, I'm going to leave a link in the bottom of, for the description of this video for o Operation Comfort. And if you can find it in your heart, go to that link and make a donation or at least look up Operation Comfort, see what they're all about. I think you'll be pleased with what you see. It's an excellent group. They do a whole lot of good work down here. And while I'm on the line of nonprofits, you know, there's quite a few uh, military based nonprofits out there. Uh, some only help post 9 11 veterans, some help all veterans. You know, they all have their different things. I would strongly encourage you to look things up and do what weighs best on your heart if you plan on making donations. Just remember that not all these nonprofits are created equally. Now, I had an accident recently at the Texas Regional Games, and I did some major, major damage to my hand cycle. I had to replace my front wheel, my cassette, my chain ring, my chain guard, just multiple, multiple things with the hand cycle. And it costs a fortune. I reached out to the Challenged Athletes Foundation's Operation Rebound, and they were very quick to respond and help me out. Uh, Move United also approved me of a grant to help me out. I've got requests in with another nonprofit called uh, Team Catapult, and hopefully they will be able to help out. Uh, were it not for these nonprofits, there was no way I'd be able to be up and running again. The only reason why I am able to be up and running again, not just that, but because I still owe a lot of money, and it's because of a local adaptive cycling shop here in San Antonio. They're called Pedal Guerrero. Uh, I'll leave a link for them as well. And I, every nonprofit and stuff like that, I'm going to be leaving a link for. But they have really, really taken good care of me over the years, and they're allowing me to make payments as I can. No interest. Uh, I probably shouldn't say that, but I did. Oops. 
but they take really good care of me. Um, they're more like family members to me than anything else. Um, Joe Leon, the owner, he is retired army. His wife is an Air Force veteran. And they're just all around good folks, real good folks. Um, the team that I race with doing marathons, that's uh, the Achilles International Freedom Team. Achilles International is a all disabled folks nonprofit. They're not just military, everything. Uh, it doesn't matter if you are hurt in a car accident, you are injured in you know whatever kind of an issue, born with disabilities, they're there to help you out. Uh, the Freedom Team, which is what I'm on, that is the veterans branch of it. Uh, we do marathons from coast to coast. Uh, I'll start in January. Uh, January, we've got uh, the Disney Half Marathon, Houston Marathon, then come uh, then come uh, April, it's Boston Marathon. October, we're busy. We've got Chicago, Detroit, Marine Corps, and then November is New York City. And, you know, marathons are added and removed as, as we go along. Uh, one of our biggest sponsors as the veteran portion is General Motors Military Appreciation. And the folks at GM, they take such fantastic care of us. When we go up to race in Detroit, they treat us like we're kings and queens. And it's just, it, we couldn't ask for any more support than we can than we get from them. They are also major sponsors for us when we go to uh, the Disney half, as well as Cigna. Uh, when we're in Boston, we have tremendous support from the Boston Transit Police at, where they meet us at the airport, they escort us around everywhere we go. They're phenomenal. I mean, it's just amazing the support that we get. And, you know, it's it doesn't fall on deaf ears as to, you know, all that is done for us. We are all super appreciative of it. I try to be as vocal about this as possible just so that people can understand what, what we've got going on here and how fortunate we are. Now, as I said, not all nonprofits are created equal, and we are fortunate as military veterans. We've got more opportunities than others. There are lots and lots of nonprofits out there that help anybody who is disabled. Some are strictly for people with spinal cord injuries. Some are for people who are strictly blind. Some for people who are strictly deaf. Some strictly for children. You know, it's a, it's a wide gambit of things. Here in San Antonio, we're at we're pretty much a nexus for many, many of these disabled activities. We have uh, a fully inclusive theme park here called Morgan's Wonderland. The owner of that uh, nonprofit, you know, their nonprofit now, his name is Gordon Hartman. He decided to make this park for his daughter Morgan, so she would have a place to enjoy. And that turned into a big thing. He turned it into a nonprofit. Then they went ahead and they built a sports complex. They built a summer camp, just like you know you would send your kids to Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, but 100% inclu inclusive. He built uh, what he's calling the Mac Center, which is any kind of medical care that you need for disabled folks all in one location under one roof. Makes, makes life a whole lot easier. And... You know, Mr. Hartman really has gone above and beyond. You know, I, I can't say anything but positive about that man and the legacy that he has built for himself and for his daughter. Um, I also had mentioned Challenged Athletes Foundation. And that is for all disabled athletes. Uh, they have different grant periods that are open throughout the course of the year. You put in for your grants, and it will help to help you to purchase equipment. All this stuff is super, super expensive. Uh, my hand cycle off the shelf would be about nine grand, and I've got over over eleven, twelve thousand dollars worth of upgrades into it. So this stuff, you know, it's it's not cheap at all. Uh, if you were going with a carbon bike, you're starting off at around twenty grand. Then you've got the off road equipment. Uh, then you you can also get into uh, recumbent bikes and 
racing wheelchairs and off-road wheelchairs and golfing chairs and the different lifts that you need and just it goes on and on and on anything that is involved with handicap is outrageously cost uh all these nonprofits are extremely extremely important most people would not be able to live even halfway decent lives without these groups so one thing you really need to ask yourself is not just, you know, how do these people get along, but how can they afford things? Uh, as an example, um, let's say you want to buy yourself a van. The van's going to cost you, what, fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 just for a regular van. Then you add another $20,000 worth of adaptive equipment so that you can use it as a disabled person. You know, that's, that's not cheap. It's not cheap at all. Some of these things cost as much as a small house, depending on what part of the country you're in anyways. So, you know, when, when you look at disabled folks, just don't look at, ooh, look at these freaks. You know, think, think of what it takes just for us to live a normal life. You know, it's a whole lot more than the regular folks. Well, I'm about running out of things to say. My mouth is getting dry and my throat's getting sore. I'm talking too much. So I'm going to just play some music for the rest of this. And I hope you all have a great day. Get out there and ride. Get active. Do whatever you need to do to live yourself a better life and a better quality of life. There are no excuses.
the sunset in your eyes I couldn't find the strength to say What was running through my mind You couldn't help but notice me Staring with that awkward smile From the other side of Thompson Street I felt love for a little while Sunset glow in that sunset glow. You looked more beautiful than anyone I know, than anyone I know. You ended up falling for me. To this day I don't know how I think about it constantly I promise I won't let you down But when I asked you told me yes To be in mine forevermore All I can offer is my best Through the good and bad, through rich and poor dress on with that white dress on you look more beautiful than anyone I've known than anyone I've
the same girl.